Hello students. We start here with today the laws of chemical combination. There are five different laws of chemical combination. And we know that the smallest portion of matter is atom. And the atoms of the same or different elements combine to form molecules. The chemical reactions involve atoms and molecules. Since 17th century, the scientists were trying to establish the basis of these chemical combinations. Ultimately, they came up with five different laws called the laws of chemical combination. And these are the first law is law of conservation of mass. Second, law of constant composition or it's also called as law of definite proportions. Third, law of multiple proportions. Fourth, law of reciprocal proportions. And the fifth law is Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. The first four laws, that is the law of conservation of mass, law of constant composition, law of multiple proportions, law of reciprocal proportions, and Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. That is the fifth one. The first four involves with the mass relationships, while the fifth one, that is the Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes, it involves the volume of the gases both among the reactants and the products. So we'll discuss these laws one by one. The first law we start with is the law of conservation of mass. So law of conservation of mass was established by a French chemist, Antoine Lavoisier. And this law deals with the relation between the mass of the reactants and products in physical changes or chemical reactions. Antoine Lavoisier brought a revolution in the field of chemistry and along with co-workers, he gave the modern system of nomenclature of chemical substances. And so he also won a Nobel Prize for this. And according to this law, in all physical changes and chemical reactions, the total mass of the products is the same as the total mass of the reactants. So mass of reactants equals to mass of products in accordance with law of conservation of mass. And this law also, according to this law, matter can neither be created nor be destroyed. Thus, there is no change in mass in a physical change or chemical reaction. And that's why this law is also called law of indestructibility of matter. Yes, he is a famous scientist, Antoine Lavoisier. He gave the law of conservation of mass. Let us see the experimental verification of this law. So with the help of an experiment, Landolt verified this law and this was performed in a H-shaped tube called Landolt's tube. As it will be shown in the figure, you can see this, this is Landolt's tube and it consists of two limbs. In one of the limbs, we take sodium chloride solution. In the other limb, we take silver nitrate solution there. So this is an S-shaped apparatus and this is called as the Landolt's tube. So we'll take the two solutions. One of the solutions we take silver nitrate and the other we take sodium chloride. The tube is sealed and then weighed. After that, the tube is shaken for some time in order to mix the two solutions. That means a chemical reaction will occur and it results in the formation of a white precipitate of silver chloride there, AgCl will be formed. That is the reaction, chemical reaction that takes place is silver nitrate, AgNO3 reacts with NaCl to form 
AgCl, that is white precipitate of silver chloride gets precipitated along with sodium nitrate, NaNO3. The tube is again red and no change in mass is noticed. So this justifies the law of conservation of mass. And in a chemical reaction, the reactant species only exchange partners to form new species known as products. So this is the experimental verification of the law for law of conservation of mass. Let us see this numerical here. The numerical is question, what weight of sodium chloride is decomposed by 4.9 grams of sulfuric acid if 6 gram of sodium hydrogen sulfate, that is NaHSO4, and 1.825 gram of hydrogen chloride are produced in the same reaction. I'll show you here on the board the reactions. The reaction is NaCl reacts with H2SO4. NaCl reacts with H2SO4. And it results in the formation of sodium hydrogen sulfate, NaHSO4 plus HCl. Now you need to calculate here the weight of sodium chloride that is asked and it is decomposed by 4.9 gram of sulfuric acid. That is mass of sulfuric acid given is 4.9 grams. And NaHSO4, that is sodium bisulfite, sulfate, NaHSO4 is given there as 6 grams and mass of HCl is given as 1.825 grams. Now you see here on the board the working. The working is you need to calculate the weight of NaCl. So let us assume this weight of NaCl to be x grams. NaCl as x grams. We are taking this as x grams. So we know that in law, in accordance with law of conservation of mass, weight of reactants must be equal to the weight of the products, weight of the products, okay? So let us confirm and calculate the mass of NaCl there, that is x grams. So you will take x grams plus 4.9 grams equals to 6 grams plus 1.825 grams. So this on addition we get as 7.825 grams and this x grams plus 4.9 grams. We will subtract 4.9 from 7.825 grams respectively to get the weight of NaCl there. So x grams will be equal to 7.825 grams minus 4.9 grams respectively. And we get the answer there as 2.925 grams. This is the answer. So weight of NaCl that is produced is equal to 2.925 grams respectively. So this is how you will solve the questions that are related to that of law of conservation of mass. So weight of NaCl decomposed equals to 2.925 grams respectively. Let us see the second problem. The second problem is when 4.2 gram sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, is added to a solution of acetic acid, CH3COOH. Acetic acid is also called as vinegar. Weighing 10 grams, 
it is observed that 2.2 grams of carbon dioxide is released to the atmosphere. The residue is formed to weigh 12.0 grams show that these observations are in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. So you, here you need to prove the law of conservation of mass. That is left hand side should be equal to right hand side. Weight of reactants must be equal to weight of products and there should be no change in mass during the chemical reaction. And that's how you can show that these observations are in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. So let me write what is given first. The question that is given is sodium bicarbonate NaHCO3 reacts with acetic acid CH3COOH there. So we write the chemical equation NaHCO3 sodium bicarbonate reacts with acetic acid CH3COOH and it results in the formation of sodium acetate CH3COONA plus H2O plus carbon dioxide. So this is the equation that is given. Then sodium bicarbonate that is given, the question is 4.2 grams is added to a solution of acetic acid weighing 10 grams. Sodium acetate plus H2O is the residue that is formed. And the residue that is formed here in the question is found to weigh 12.0 grams. And carbon dioxide that is produced is equal to 2.2 grams. Okay, yes. Now see here how we prove this result in agreement with law of conservation of mass. Now you will write that weight of reactants should be equal to weight of products. Weight of products. So weight of reactants is 4.2 grams plus 10 grams equals to residue, weight of residue, it is 12.0 grams plus 2.2 grams. So these two, when you add them together, you get 14.2 grams is equal to, here also 12.0 plus 2.2 gives you 14.2 grams. So since LHS equals to RHS, this is in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. There is no change in the mass of the chemical reaction that has occurred. And that's how we can show that it is in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. So you see the screen? The last part, how you'll write? The since there is no change in mass during the chemical reaction, these observations are in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. So you will solve this in this way and we'll start with the next law that is law of definite proportion.